Why are these dumb products making millions? He's selling air in a bottle and makes $300,000 a year while other great products fail. How? In 1975, Gary Dahl sells over 1 million pet rocks in three months and becomes a millionaire. What could possibly be so great about it? I'm gonna call you Herbert. Gary came up with this million dollar idea while sitting in a bar with his friends, hearing them complain about their pets. So he invented a new one that couldn't die, become sick or disobey. Herbert, sit, play dead, roll over. They cost him less than a penny to buy and he sold them for four bucks each. So what's the real secret behind its success? I think I found it and it might surprise you. Gary was a marketing executive and he struck right at the time before Christmas when people would literally buy anything. All it took was the right packaging. See, he didn't get rich off of selling rocks. He got rich off of selling the cardboard box, the manual, the messaging, the way it was sold. What makes products like these so successful is genius marketing. But then I thought, wait a minute, that can't be. Even great products with great marketing fail all the time. And then why would products fail that are launched by the biggest companies in the world that can hire the world's best marketers? So that can't be it. But I kept searching. You thought the pet rock was dumb? It gets worse. These are instant underpants. So while my instant underpants are instantly getting ready in the next 30 minutes or so, let me show you these weird, lazy reading glasses. Sold hundreds of thousands of units. I bought them last year because if you look into it, you actually look down. Especially if you read a lot, and I like to read books with a lot of incredible information. Currently I'm reading this one here. Next up, let's try the steel soap. It sold millions of dollars worth. Supposedly, this one helps you get rid of odors like garlic, onion, and fish. Let's try it out. Gotta wash my hands with normal soap first. Does it still smell? <laughs> Does it still smell? Does it still smell? Now, using the steel soap. It's not as bad. I can still kind of like faintly smell it. Let's see what the instant underpants are up to. I do not feel remorse. I do not. And looking at all these products, I found the secret to their success. What do they all have in common? They serve a specific purpose and they work. Well, some of them. They have utility. Unlike the pet rock, they can actually be useful. No, Herbert, I didn't mean that you weren't. I'm sorry, I. Herbert? Wait, no, Herbert! At the same time, that can't be the secret. How many startups sound good on paper that make something useful nobody buys? A fork that has an integrated sauce dispenser? A smart water bottle that connects to your Wi-Fi and lets you know with AI how much you had to drink? The pause pod so you can finally take a nap anywhere. Isn't that useful? But I was not going to give up. So I ordered more products to find the common pattern amongst them. These next products I looked at grew to tens of millions up to $100 million in just a few years. This was very eye-opening. And let's see if you can spot the pattern that I've noticed. 100% cricket protein. So this is a protein alternative without any dairy. This here is mud water. You might've seen the ads on this on YouTube. I'm about to drink some mud. And I think you should too. Projecting $60 million in revenue with one product. It comes with this. Yeah, it's fine. It's marketed as a coffee alternative with only one seventh of the caffeine. Then you have Magic Spoon. They grew to 100 million in less than two years. High protein, keto friendly, gluten free. So good. So it's a sweet kids cereal alternative, but without the sugar. I guess you could call the founders cereal entrepreneurs. <laughs> Look what arrived. This ridiculous looking product is a portable infrared sauna for your home. Get me out of here. That was 20 minutes. So it's a sauna alternative, but without having to leave your house. So what do all these products have in common? People already want pets. Well, here's a pet rock. People love coffee. Here's mud water, which is like that, but different. People love saunas. Here's a sauna, but as a tent for your home. They give the customer what they already want, but in a different or better way, putting a spin on it. And I had found the answer. 
until I realized that also didn't really make sense. Then why did the coolest cooler fail? The coolest is a complete redesign of what a cooler can be. People already wanted coolers. It was a cooler alternative, made it different and, and better. An integrated blender, Bluetooth speakers, a USB charger, LED lighting, plates and knives. It probably does your taxes as well. They broke a Kickstarter record, but it failed miserably. Why? What made the difference? With no progress on my quest, I realized how much I was missing Herbert. Pet rocks like him were brought to market in dark times right after the Vietnam War, when people needed something to cheer them up. This was a big problem, and in a way, they actually helped solve it. Solve the problem? That's what the cooler was missing. Why haven't cooler designs changed in almost 50 years? Because they were fine the way they were. This thing weighs 40 pounds without anything inside of it. it. It serves no purpose. You can't just add a bunch of features to it that nobody really needs and call that innovation. They're solving problems that aren't there. Now we're getting somewhere. Solving problems. You got stinky garlic fingers that normal subs can't fix. You need coffee, but you want to get off of caffeine. You want to use a sauna, but you don't want to leave your house and drive for 20 minutes. And for the pet rock, you need to get a Christmas gift for your dumb kids that want a pet, but you don't want something that poops. Problem solved. In some way, they all solved a real problem people have that is painful enough that they're willing to pay for a solution. This is not a painful problem, utensil-made guy. But there's a little detail that makes all the difference. It can't just be a solution that takes a long time and a lot of work. Nobody wants to buy your six months posture correction course because it takes too long, it's too much work, and it's just inconvenient, even though that's the solution to that problem. Just let me strap something to my back, boom, done. These products solve these problems conveniently, quickly, without much effort, and then you made millions. As an entrepreneur, you only get rewarded if you solve a difficult, painful problem and make it easy for others to overcome it. That's really hard, but it's how the world has changed. I think you're also gonna enjoy this video over here. I put a ton of work into all of them, so I'm sure you're gonna like it. I'll see you in the next one.